Hello, thanks for joining us at DCD Transporters. Another little video for you, and we've just got ourselves an early T5, uh, which is quite exciting. They are getting a little bit older now. So this is a really, really early one, 2003. So let's have a look around that. It will show you what is sometimes the more typical things that you're gonna have to look for when buying one of these early vans. It's not really a buyer's guide. Um, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that go through that and do really, really good buying guides for these early T5s. There is a lot of things to look at and, and consider when you are buying one. So this is really what you can expect if you're gonna go out and buy an early van. So like I said, this is a 2003. Um, really typical example is done 220,000 miles nearly so you know these are the sort of things that are going to come up and when you're looking at these vans that are now probably sub five thousand pounds to go out and buy you know somewhere between sort of three and a half four five grand is going to get you into something that's quite reasonable relatively tidy ish um might need a few little bits replacing on it you know they're 20 years old you know plastics have got brittle and all that sort of thing so this is a really good typical example of all those things that break all those things that you're going to have to look at take into consideration that you know these probably will need replacing and they're not unusual faults or issues that you're going to have to deal with so i'm going to show you the van we'll have a little walk around and you can see what it is that you'll probably find out there on the market so let's go and do that so here she is um like i said 2003 reflex silver early t5 quite a nice spec um you know it's relatively tidy there are obviously bits and bobs on it for its age and its mileage and uh, we're just going to go through those now so we go through the sort of like the main bits of the bodywork what you're going to find you know is going to be typical on cars that you're going to be looking at vans you know we've got a little bit of corrosion coming through on one of the the wings there that is not untypical stone chips will obviously uh, start corroding panels if left unchecked these are quite common that they want to fall off so the little rubber trims in there at least it's still there it is obviously just trying to uh, wiggle its way out and um, the usual scratches and sort of like little dents and dings but obviously they're um you know prevalent on on anything of that sort of age the rest of the side of this van is quite tidy there's going to be bits to look for down in the the lower corners down down here they generally tend to get as you can see on there quite a few stone chips so it's those stone chips that left untreated will obviously turn into a little bit of corrosion sometimes you'll get them on the um, trailing edge of the wheel arch on on the rear as well but this one looks to be um sort of fairly good round here uh, sidebars uh, sidebars on you know you, you do see them and they're, they're getting quite a bit of rust on them if they're not um sort of like uh well if sorry if they're if they're older than a few years you might find a few little bits of corrosion on it tailgate generally they're not really problematic they don't really rust but what they do is this is quite typical round here we've got a little bit of bubbling coming around the handle that's just where the water's obviously got underneath the paint. A lot of chipping where people have got hold of the tailgate keys in their hands, that sort of thing. And uh, obviously chipped around the uh, lock. Um, yeah, little bits around here, not uncommon. Uh, looks like we've inherited a wiper that's probably about the same age as the van. So that could really do with being changed. That is uh, pretty useless looking. Uh, cap is missing. Usual bits of trims that are gonna disappear over that period of time quite nice on this van we've got an original spoiler so um that's quite unusual got the volkswagen spoiler on it from the factory so uh, obviously the van had that from from new usual age related marks where it's been down a tree now these are quite wide vehicles in the grand scheme of things so it's not uncommon to see you know marks where people have obviously gone down narrow lanes and you've got a bit of foliage on the left hand side there as you're driving down and of course you've had to move over for something so you've got some marks in the paint they will come off uh, with a bit of buffing 
Um, this wheel arch, like we pointed out on the other one, you know, it's pretty good on the trailing edge. There's not much going on there at all. Come around to the front and there's obviously a few chips on here that have been left unattended. So you're just starting to get a little bit brown there. A bit of tea cut and a bit of paint will sort that out. Put a bit of anti-corrosion on that, that lip there and uh, that'll be that sorted. That's not too bad. Um, worth having a look at the brakes as well, seeing how corroded they are. Obviously, if the van's not moved for a while, they're going to get pretty manky in there. Uh, might be worth setting uh, yourself up for a new set of discs and pads uh, just to freshen everything up. Again, sidebars, quite tidy, not too bad. The doors generally tend to have little sort of chips and bits that are down in the bottom corner there but this one again is not too bad we've got a little bit coming down on the trailing edge this is quite common where the flap has obviously moved back and it's hit the door um, and vice versa the door's been slammed obviously with the flap open these flaps can be a little bit problematic um, again it's just age related stuff so what we find is this little spring clip here it's a bit loose on this one um needs to be nice and tight and functioning correctly so when you pull the flap shut it actually springs it closed and keeps hold of it you can easily adjust how these flaps sit it's got two little torx bolts one sits there one's down the bottom there loosen those off don't remove them completely just loosen them off and you will find that you can move that panel around get a nice gap in there this looks as if it needs moving a little bit further forward and i think that would all benefit from having uh, that spring looked at as well these springs are really cheap less than a fiver um, and that'll get your flap working as you would like uh, another thing worth sort of mentioning and everybody forgets these little tips is when you take your diesel cap off you've got two choices it either fits in there out of the way, which is what Volkswagen has designed that little recess for, or failing that, it has got little clips to hold on to the top of the flap. Just like ours, you'll probably find that the little tail that keeps it in check has broken. So it's either going to be there or stick it in there and it keeps it safe. And then that way, if you have put it there or there, when you shut the flap to go away from the fuel pump, um, you can't forget it. You've got to remember to put it back down and, and in. So let's put that back on there. A couple of clicks done. But yeah, these disappear as well. These little plastic uh, trims, again, not expensive, just clips on. Stops it from opening when the door is shut. So that just stops that from moving when you've got the door closed. Uh, looking down on this side, this is another quite common area where you might get a little bit of corrosion but it's not looking too bad there. Again, not really something that's gonna give you too many headaches. Door seals, this one is pretty decent, um, but they do get full of muck and rot. So, um, you know, maybe new set of door seals is gonna be advantageous. Doesn't sound too bad for a 2003, does it? It actually um, looks all right. Bits around the handle, they're always um, susceptible. For a little bit of water getting in there don't be surprised if your van's been painted this has obviously seen some paint over the years it's not uncommon i wouldn't let it bother you you know it is one of those things as long as it presents itself quite well who really cares if it's been painted or not these have all got a history they are not new so um just looking at this from the outside i think it presents itself really rather well it's okay it's quite typical again with the transporter these little marks down on the a pillar they are one of two things so it's quite common for these to get stone chips on here you can see a couple of little stone chips in the paint left unattended they obviously can then spread but back when this was relatively new i reckon this has had a windscreen that windscreen's been cut out really rather badly, which has then damaged the paint on the inside of the windscreen, which has then led it to sort of corrode on that inside edge. Now it's not horrific at the minute, you know, a bit of tidying up and we'll probably get that sorted. Might need a windscreen out just to really get in there. But for now, I think we can just tidy that up and that'll be quite acceptable. It's not, um, 
corroded that badly as yet, but you know, we do see it. And it's normally down to a really bad windscreen replacement where they've damaged the paint when they've been removing the old windscreen. The techniques now are so much better than what they used to be uh, for getting them out without using the great big, um, you know, removing tools with the blades on them. So uh, that's now, you know, much, much improved to what it used to be. So, right, it's moving on. You'll probably see down in the corner there, just want to check that it's still got its chassis number on the dashboard. Um, that is actually uh, a sticker on the dash that if you try and remove, um, will break. So just give a, a look at that, make sure it's all in one continuous piece. It doesn't look like it's been peeled up and the numbers obviously match what it's saying on the logbook. So that's another little thing to consider. Uh, stone chips, obviously that's gonna be its worst enemy on the front. Stone chips on the leading edge of the bonnet. Uh, you know, again, will turn into corrosion if left long enough, but this isn't too bad. Um, again, you know, let's not kid ourselves. It's definitely had some paint over the years. Um, but like I say, I'm quite happy with that. Few little age related marks, but nothing that's gonna detract from it. A tidy little van for the money. If you're on a budget, these make a lot of sense. So let's go inside. What we got here, yeah. Someone's definitely been mucking about with the wiring from the door to the van. We've definitely got an extra wire here, probably something to do with a speaker or something like that, not uncommon. But what they've done in the meantime is break this clip. So that will now not sit in there without popping out. Worth getting a replacement for that, either from a breaker's yard or from Volkswagen, as that's gonna let water into that bit of the van. So yeah, definitely worth getting in there and fixing that as soon as possible. Other normal faults are gonna be, yeah, door rubber. The passenger side has survived, this side certainly hasn't. So we do need to get a new one on there, give that a little bit of rust prevention on that seam, and then obviously pop a new seal on that. Just campers have got those, they're pretty cheap. Um, probably worth getting one from them or Heritage or something like that, you know, compare the prices, have a look around. You'll get that for not a lot of money. Typical T5 seat bolsters failed uh, it's not broken through too much yet starting to get a good bit of wear on this piece but you can feel the metal underneath that piece of foam so yeah it's starting to get a little bit worn there grubby bits that just probably need a good clean these early t5 seats aren't the most comfortable they are a little bit thinner than what the t5.1 is if you do get the opportunity to swap them out for a T5.1, the foams in the later van are much more uh, padded and they are more comfortable. And of course, we've got the debate between whether you want a double or a single seat on the passenger side. Now, oddly, this van has come out of the factory with a single seat because this was a, a five seat combi from new and somebody has swapped this out and put a double in. Now, if we go around to the other side, let's show you something that we've seen quite a bit of this year, which is a little bit worrying to be fair. So, so far this year, we've had four vans come to us that have been converted from single seats to double seats. And what they have done is they have not put the bolts in for the double. So the single seat has obviously the two bolts in this very lower corner. So you've got the bolts down there and you'll have bolts the other side. That is where the single seat bolts on. Where the double seat bolts on is obviously down in those corners. The jack is, you've got another bolt there. And then down in here as well. So on a double seat, there should be eight bolts holding that in. They go into captive nuts into the floor of the van. Those holes are in the floor, ready to take those nuts. But for some reason, people don't seem to be fitting them, I think that's quite dangerous. You've got potentially two adults sitting on a seat here that's only designed and bolted down for one. Not only have you got a heavier seat to start with, with this double seat base, but you've now obviously got, you know, less fixings than what it should have from the factory. Bizarrely, this has been a year for this. Last year, we didn't see any, you know. This year, we've seen four, you know, and that's four too many. We just... Um, can't believe somebody would think that that's acceptable to be putting in a double seat and only putting half the fixings in. So this has either got to have that seat out 
and we're going to have to put those fixings in or I'm going to try and get a single seat for it. So I'd like to get a single seat, but we'll see how it goes. If we can't find one, then yes, we're going to have to put those bolts in. And uh, that's a bit of a shame, but here we go. Moving on. Trim. Let's have a look at bits on the dashboard. So quite common areas on this. You'll find that obviously that's only got half of the clip that it should have. Uh, that is um, sort of missing there. Aftermarket stereo. That's quite common. Uh, to have that replaced also many holes <laughs> in the switches now luckily on this one they've kept the holes to these replaceable little um blanks so that's pretty good really we can replace those and we've got an ejector seat button or uh, rockets or something like that i'm not really sure but um yeah that's not connected to anything so that'll be going and we'll just get four new blanks and that'll tidy the dashboard right up. So that's quite nice. Gear gaiters do generally tend to wear in the creases. So that's not uncommon as well. Um, all the switches just check that they work. Now the fan itself, these can be a little bit, uh, not problematic, but obviously, like I said, everything's getting a little bit old, isn't it? These dials do suffer from uh, the cables pulling out of them and the flaps getting stuck so it's generally down to bad use to be honest because people try and ring the dial around like really force it around it doesn't go between there and there it starts at 12 o'clock it goes anti-clockwise and finishes at three o'clock and then to get it back from three o'clock to 12 o'clock that's as far as it goes people are trying to join those two up there is certain models of t5s that do go all the way around but generally on the aircon versions, and there's a couple of exceptions as well, they don't go all the way around. People force them, things break. And especially now that the plastics are getting a little bit older. What you might find is you try and put it round to the um, upper vent position, which is this one, and you don't get much airflow coming through these. And that's because the flap that sits right down underneath this panel, it's quite easy to get to once you remove the radio. So take this top panel off, two screws underneath here, uh, that just unclips. This then pulls off, take the radio out, and there's a flap that goes down onto the heater box here, and it's that flap that's probably stuck, or the cable has come away, or the clips aren't working in some way. There are some pieces available on the internet to go and get replacement parts for those, so you can make it work again. If you have to replace these dials, I think they've been continued or discontinued, sorry, some time ago, so you might struggle with that. Breakers yards might be your uh, best bet. So other than that, um, everything's sort of quite tidy. I wouldn't expect masses of wear. So like I said, this is done over 200,000 miles. If you check on the clock, I think it's done something like 219,000. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty good example of general wear and tear that you're gonna get, you know, these have managed to survive. These generally tend to break. These aren't available brand new. You can't get OE ones of these, but you can swap them to a T5.1 version. So that is quite nice. Um, just check everything works. Electrically windows work, they drop, they go down, they go up, they don't get stuck. Anything like that is all good. Um, yeah, just check everything. My biggest piece of advice I can offer, even though this isn't a buying guide, is you buy on condition rather than mileage. I have never been bothered by whatever those numbers say on the dashboard. Look at the condition of the van, how the owners treated it, how does it present itself? Is it presenting quite nicely? Is everything working? Has it been looked after? Is it clean? It's all going to add, you know, a, a good bit of confidence to, to buying something that looks as if someone's cared about it rather than the numbers that are on the dashboard. It is not uncommon to see these get up to 300,000 miles and beyond. We had a friend of ours, I think he's done about 380,000 miles. Yes, it needed components. Yes, it had had a fair few new bits put on it in that time, but it was still running essentially, you know, the same engine, all the same components, uh, you know, the major components. Uh, but it was good. It was a good van. Um, Another common thing, we've swapped these out already, and that is the ashtray and the cup holders. They are absolutely rubbish from the factory. This has now got a Vanex one on it. Um, so we swapped this out yesterday just to put a new um, bit into it. So you just swap that all over. It's a pretty easy swap to do. And then, yes, you've now got uh, cup holders that work in. Sorry, my camera action isn't that great so yeah we've now got a, a vanex one in there that's so much better the original design is absolutely rubbish so uh yeah there's that that's quite tidy 
check the glove box all works none of the bits have been broken all of the uh, screw covers and everything else is in there vents work and stuff like that another really common issue on these and ours is a really good example of it is the headliner is not only quite disgusting you know it is one of those things it is 20 years old but it's also started to fail quite considerably so we'll be ripping that out and uh, re-trimming that with something else again that's not a hard job once you get the uh, headliner off the uh, re-trimming that you can either do it in carpet or suede or you know original sort of like uh, sort of style uh, cotton type material uh, brushed cotton um, and that'll look really nice that'll really tidy that up a few little bits um, we seem to have a broken sun visor holder there that's still available from VW so don't worry about that they're on the internet quite readily available so that's this ends if we go into the back of the van we'll have a little quick look in there a little bit of an oddity on this van as well that the rear seats have been changed from the combi into these sort of school bus style seats so uh, i don't think we'll be keeping them for very long but other things just to check that are working is yeah, you just want to make sure your lights are working in the back here Everything's functional. We've got a little bit of trim missing from the door. That's not unusual. It's the little lock button that's missing from there. Everything else seems to be sort of quite tidy. We've definitely had a change of plastics down here. We've got two lots going on. We've got the sort of charcoal ones and the black ones. Um, it should be gray all around there. So someone's definitely been in there swapping stuff about. Um, yeah, seat belts. Seat belts do generally tend to wear but these aren't too bad. They're not got fluffy edges or no cuts and bits and bobs in them, but they are pretty grubby. So we're gonna to have to get them cleaned. Uh, and you'll also note as well that the early T5s, especially on like the uh, combis, caravels, multivans, are a, a gray seat belt, whereas the other ones were black. So just another little trim change on there. So otherwise everything else, no rot inside the van you wouldn't expect to see any i wouldn't expect to see any just make sure all your little latches and everything are working and your child lock ones are all functioning as well so yeah so sort of pretty typical and uh, this um seat's a bit odd but like i said that'll be that'll be off anyway door shut okay nothing wonky nothing bent no accident damage Let's have a look in here. So somebody has cut the um, jack holder off. That's a bit disappointing. I hate that. Um, we don't cut them off. Even when we trim in the carpet, I leave it on. If you're a good carpet trimmer, you can get around them and make them look really neat. Absolutely zero need for taking that off whatsoever. So um, yeah, that's a bit disappointing. Somebody cutting that off, but there you go. These wheel arches aren't too bad. I'd expect to see a lot of scuffs over them. That's quite typical of a good used van, you know, where people have had cargo in and out of the back of here, all sorts of bits and bobs in the back, moving around, scuffing it about. There is no rot in there though, so that's all quite tidy. And there's no significant dents. We have seen vans that have been used commercially that have had huge dents in the wheel arches where they've tried to force large items into um, little vans like pallets and uh, commercial equipment and they have damaged the wheel arches beyond repair really so it then means a replacement wheel arch or some other way of making it look tidy but yeah we've not got that ours are quite decent so a few little bits and bobs that you know it's quite typical as well when vans have been scuffed you just want to keep on top of it put a little bit of rust prevention uh, on that and just make sure that when you do carpet it you're not carpeting that and forgetting about it do put a little dab of anti rust on all of those exposed bits just to keep them nice nothing seems to be too bad in here yeah good clean and uh will be away so um yeah then on the top of the tailgate that all looks pretty tidy as well and quite reasonable aftermarket set of speakers and a Bit of that yeah damaged clip round the boot release but again that's not uncommon and it's quite an easy fix someone's obviously tinted these windows and uh, they're showing signs of wear now so we're gonna have to probably get that ripped off and replaced so but again not too bad so on the back's got tow bar 
that wouldn't bother me in the least. I think that's actually a real benefit having a tow bar. We haven't checked its uh, function yet, but I'm hoping that'll all be good and okay. Just adds another little bit to it. Generally, these probably haven't towed very much. Um, might find us had like a little bike rack or something like that on it or a small trailer. But again, clutch is good on this, so I don't think it's done much towing. These little reflectors fill up with muck. Uh, so as you can see in there, they got a bit dirty. This side looks as if it's got a bit of a crack in it, so it's got more muck than the other side. Yeah, easy to replace, but very readily available. So again, wouldn't worry about that. Um, yeah, where else are we? Wheels. So it's got a set of alloys on it. I'm not very keen on them. Uh, they're also made by a company that does a lot of car alloys. So I'm not overly convinced that these are van wheels. They might just shear the same stud pattern um, so they've been put on. The tyres are suitable for the van, but I'm not sure these wheels are load rated. So I think we might be taking those off and they're quite scruffy anyway. So uh, I think we'd like to get rid of them really. But yeah, lights all okay, no cracks in them. That's quite a common area to get a little little crack, you know, someone's uh, backed into something or someone's lent on it or put something up against it and it's uh, damaged the lens but they all look okay so that's quite nice okay. typical Volkswagen let's give it a slam but yeah overall quite happy with that like I said that's a, a really good typical example of an early T5 what you're gonna expect what you're gonna see so this is a two and a half litre engine they are a rattly old thing mainly because they are gear driven so there's no time and belt and there's no time and chain so that does make them a little bit noisier personally i'm quite a fan of the two and a half liter i think they're a really good engine they were commercially designed uh, for you know volkswagen and i think that you know, when they're running well like everything they're a great engine you know they pull really strong they've got lots of torque they are a good engine this is a 130 so this is an axd engine i quite like the axds i think they're um quite a nice engine uh, the only thing going against it is that rattle and um that's accentuated as it gets older because obviously components wear they do suffer on these from like camshaft wear so that's something to take into consideration but i don't want to go full depth into the engine but i would just say you know when these were new if you bought a 1.9 that wasn't the top model you know if you were buying one 20 years ago you'd really be aspiring to buy the two and a half and and that for me is where it's at you know they pull better they drive better the six speed gearbox is much better is much stronger these two and a halves when they're running lovely they are a super engine they're just a little bit noisier but they are when they're going good that they are quite low maintenance you know they no belt no chain just get good servicing and the proper oil if you put the good oil in it you know that's designed for the two and a half you'll have a lot less problems if you're trying to um, run it on that than what you would if you're just putting any old oil in it and the garage who's servicing it really should be putting the correct oil in it from you know the factory specification so consider that when you are buying one but horses for courses people will love the 1.9 and they are quite a reliable engine but these two and a halves when they're going lovely they are great and buying a two and a half wouldn't bother me in any way whatsoever in fact i prefer them even though they are a little bit noisier so uh, so thanks for joining me i really appreciate you guys hanging around and listening to my uh little uh, t5 chat uh, that we've had today on the early van um, i really do think they're going to be quite sought after give these things a few years they're going to be like early bays aren't they you know where everybody loves an early bay window I really like these early T5s, pre-facelift, those lights, that bonnet, you know, that grill, it's gonna have its day, isn't it? Mark my word, in a few years time, if we're still allowed to drive around these old dinosaurs, um, there's gonna be people that are turning T6.1s into T5s. I, I genuinely believe that, and to be honest, I'd like a T6.1 with the look of a t5 on it i think that would be really rather nice you see so you've got all the comforts of like the electronic steering and all the other bits and bobs that are in that van you know adaptive and all that but made to work with the pre-facelift front 
I think that could look quite cool. Um, maybe one of these days, I don't know. But as for now, this little T5 that we've picked up, I'm really happy with here. I think it's an, an, a nice little um, addition to our fleet. Uh, going to be a good little run around, just means that we can uh, use it a bit more as a van. Uh, we won't be converting this into a camper, might be putting a, you know, the original combi set up back in it. We'll carpet line it, make it nice, put a decent headliner on it, put a new roof in the back. We'll do a few little bits and bobs, but we're not going to go too mad with it. It's definitely going to be used as a work uh, sort of run around. We'll also keep you updated with a few videos on that as well. If anything happens, we'll let you know, you know, it's, it's journey with us if it breaks if it's been great you know um trips out that we've done in it mileage that we've done just to give you an idea you know what is it going to be like to run one of these in the real world you know we are going to use it i've got no from that it's not going to be wrapped in cotton wool it's not going to be restored it's not going to be given an amazing paint job it is just going to stay as it is we're going to tidy it up on the inside so it's nice to get in nice to drive and nice place to sit while you're mooching about that and we'll see how it lasts you know um and we'll document that as well so thanks very much for hanging around we really appreciate it do subscribe to us that really helps and do hit that like button because then it helps other people find our videos as well which is really great so thank you very much and we'll see you in the next one cheers bye